Hi! Alright, so it is April, which means I should probably get on doing my March wrap-up slash favorites. My wrap-up slash favorite videos are the videos in which I tell you about all the books that I read during the month, and I also tell you about my favorites during that month, such as my Netflix view and such. In March, I did not read as much as I'd like to, unfortunately. I read four novels, so that's still a good amount of novels, but... I would have liked to have read more. Last month I started this thing where I would do first impression videos right after I read it or a few days after I read the book. So those are the clips that you'll be seeing shortly. I just wanted to make a small disclaimer. Because the videos are from like right after I finished it or a few days after, they're more of the feels and less of everything that I felt about the book. It's more raw emotion and less I'm going to structure this properly. So if you want to see a nicely structured review which shows all the details of what I thought about the book, I wrote reviews for all the novels that I read this month, which is exciting because I like never do that ever. Those will be down below if you want more information on any of the books, and I'll see you soon for the favorites. Uh, I have to head to work in like two seconds, but I just finished Ham on Rye. Figured I would tell you about it. Ham on Rye is yet another book by Charles Bukowski. I read another book of his last month. This is, well, technically, I read it like a week ago. It was Post Office, and I was not too fond of it. I was a little disappointed because I heard so much about Bukowski and so many great things. Post Office was just a little bit of a disappointment. Ham on Rye was much better, in my opinion. His ideas came across much stronger, and the shock value wasn't as direct. I love my shock value in a story, and I love when stories tie together very well, and this had both of those, which was fantastic. It didn't have a strong vocabulary, which I really, really enjoy, but it did have things that I can underline, which was very awesome. This book was absolutely hilarious at some moments, and I really, really, really did enjoy the stories. It was a full novel, but it was broken up into little sections of his life. I think I would really enjoy reading short stories of Bukowski's or the poetry that he made. I'm definitely going to look into that. I think I would enjoy that even better. Maybe that'll get five stars. This book got four stars. It was enjoyable. I would recommend it. So, A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by Dave Eggers, right? This is his debut novel. It is a memoir. In this memoir, both of his parents die within five months, both of cancer. <sighs> Terrible situation, right? This memoir is unlike any memoir that I've ever read. Just, it's written very differently than a memoir usually is, and that's why it's so popular, and I will get to that. First, I'm gonna read you something. In the beginning, there's rules and suggestions for enjoyment of the book. There is no overarching need to read the acknowledgement section. So I was like, great, perfect. Guess I'm not reading that because the acknowledgement section is 20 pages. What is that? I don't understand. Actually, many of you might want to skip much of the middle, namely pages 239 to 351, which concern the lives of people in their early 20s, and those lives are very difficult to make interesting. He didn't make those interesting. I did read through those because I have an issue with skimming huge parts of books. I have an issue with skimming in general. That's why if I dislike a book, I have to make my way to the end. I always have to make my way to the end. I can never just leave off of the book and start another. I feel very, very attached to a book, even if I dislike it. One of my issues. So I did read those pages, but he did warn me, so I can't really say much against that, I guess. Matter of fact, the first three or four chapters are all some of you might want to bother with. That gets you to page 123 or so, which is a nice length, a nice novella of sort. And it was. I should have read until page 123 and stopped, but because of my need to read an entire book even if I dislike it, I read the entire thing. Up to 123, the book would have been four stars. It was really, really well done and it's very raw. It felt right to end at 123, but you know what I did? Not that. It's so strangely written and at points I thought it was completely over my head, but then you got to the very, very end. And when I say the very, very end, I mean literally the last 20 pages and you understand what you read and you're like oh I understand why he did that that's a different form of writing that I have never seen before that is some nonsense because I totally completely disliked the book until the last 20 pages and I understood what he was doing. Dave Eggers sets up this character for himself of what he's supposed to be. He sets up this really tragic scene and this really supposed to be inspiring character and he sets this up for himself. He also sets it up like he wants people to pity him 
I don't have words. Why aren't the words coming out? So it seems very, very strange, and some characters are introduced like they're as best friends even though you've never met them before, and everything is just weird, and they talk about the book within the book, there's total bookception, and it's strange. By the last 20 pages, you understand what he's doing. If you ever decide to read this book, I would only read until page 123, unless you are interested in the ending, because the ending is very interesting plot twist of sorts with the writing. That was really well done, I will admit that. I would totally skip the pages that he said to skip because those are ridiculous, why did you even put them in there? It took me way longer than I thought it would, which was so annoying, and I only gave it 3 out of 5 stars, which is super 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 unfortunate. Hopefully I'll be able to read other books that I wanted to read by the end of the month. That is it. 3 out of 5 stars. Meh. So currently I'm in a hotel and we just got to Chicago. My cousin's having a wedding soon, that's exciting. On the way here, because it's a 15 hour road trip, I finished Pivot Point on my Kindle, which was really exciting. It's about this girl named Addie and Addie lives in the compound and in the compound, everyone has mind powers. They can either tell when someone's lying, they can see into the future, they can persuade people, they can be telekinetic. That's sort of a mind power. Everyone has these different mind powers. It's super cool. Addie finds out that her parents are getting a divorce and her dad is going into the FBI in the normal realm. So then she has to decide if she wants to live with her mom in the compound or her dad in the normal realm. Thankfully, her power is she can see into the future and look at her different options and then choose which option she wants to take. The problem with that power is each one seems very real, so if one of them is a really bad decision, she's still living through it. But that's what happens, she looks at both decisions, the one where she lives in the normal realm and the one where she lives in the compound, and that's what you get for the entirety of the book. It goes from chapter to chapter, normal realm, compound realm, normal realm, compound realm. I actually really enjoyed how it was set up and I loved the four main characters. You had the two love interests, the one in the normal realm and the compound realm, of course. Then you have Layla, which is her best friend from birth, so obviously she was from the compound realm. And she also visited her in the normal realm. I even love some of the side side characters like Rowan and um, what was her name? Stephanie. Stephanie was awesome. They all worked so well as characters within the novel and they all helped Addie towards her goal of making a decision. I thought it was really cute though it was extremely predictable like it got kind of hard to read sometimes because you knew what was gonna happen at the end you totally knew it I did really enjoy the story the story was good I don't know a lot of the things were really really predictable but it was a good read I gave it 3.5 stars another thing that I had a problem with was there wasn't enough world building for me I don't know I felt like I should get more from the compound I felt like by the end I did get like everything that I needed to know but I still I would have loved so much more in the beginning talking about the compound. All right, let's talk about a separate piece for a minute because it was incredible. I absolutely loved a separate piece. I was supposed to read it in 10th grade. It was required reading and I didn't necessarily do a lot of required reading when I was in school. I always loved my independent books that I was reading so much more and I would always be involved in a book so I would always just read that book instead. However, I do think that a separate piece should be required reading. It was absolutely brilliant and it's definitely something that every 10th grader should read. Jean is our narrator and Jean is at a boarding school with his best friend Phineas. Phineas is the epitome of adolescence and fun and everything good in the world, which is the opposite of what the world is right now. They're going through World War II, so basically everything is turning into turmoil around them, and they keep hearing that the war is coming to them, the war is coming to them. They're going to get drafted soon, they're 16 at the moment. So while everything is happening, Phineas just stays so positive and so wonderful, and he's this absolute light in everyone's life. He gets away with everything, and he's just perfect. Jean describes him as this perfect human being. He has such admiration for Phineas, his best friend. So much admiration that jealousy starts kicking in, his competitiveness gets the best of him, and then everything in the book sort of falls from there. This book was brilliant because after that fall, so many things connect and so many things have to do with each other that it's, oh, uh, it's so perfect. Every sentence has to do with the sentence that came beforehand. So perfect and it felt like a puzzle while I was reading the rest of it and I kept underlining things saying, wow, this has to do with this, or wow, this has to do with the war, this has to do with adolescence, this has to do with jealousy and competitiveness and everything was so wonderful everything just intertwined so well so much different than the other coming of age novels that i've read and i've read quite a few lately this one is definitely so much different and i enjoyed it so much for what it was plus it's rather short and it's just it's moving it's so moving i gave it five out of five stars 
Absolutely brilliant, definitely should be required reading. And now on to the favorites. My favorite book this month would have to be a separate piece. I'm telling you, it should be a required reading. It is absolutely phenomenal. A separate piece is so, so good, and John Knowles is such a fantastic writer. My Netflix view this month. I have three, three things to tell you about this month. One of them is a TV series, and that's going to be Arrested Development. Arrested Development is so, so good. It stars Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, Portia de Rossi, Michael Sarah, and a few other people. It's really just a lot of witty wordplay, really good banter. It's so fantastic, and it's something that you really just enjoy watching throughout the entire thing. At least I did. I really, really enjoyed it. And they're coming out with a new season of it in May, even though it started out in 2003, and it's going to be exclusively on Netflix. So if you want to watch that, I would totally suggest watching, you know, the first three seasons. Definitely enjoyed that this month. Other things that I enjoyed, The Artist. The Artist is such a fantastic movie. It won Best Picture in the Academy Awards, I believe, two years ago. It defied all the odds because it is a black and white film, a silent film, and it's a foreign film. It was able to keep my interest throughout and it was so phenomenal. It was incredibly well done. I loved the shots that it had. It, the cinematography was absolutely beautiful. Safety Not Guaranteed is also a fantastic movie that's on Netflix. It stars Aubrey Plaza and it's an indie film. It's about time travel. It's super, super neat and it's just a movie full of what ifs. So, so good. Favorite beverage for March? That's going to be Irish cream coffee because, you know, St. Paddy's Day was in March and St. Paddy's Day is awesome and so is Irish cream coffee. So is coffee in general. Now we're on to mug of the month. I collect novelty mugs if you do not know. I picked up two this month. Actually, Actually, I picked up one and the other one was a gift. The one that I picked up was on our way to Chicago. We stopped into Ohio. We picked up Starbucks. I picked up this mug. I have a lot of these mugs now. It's kind of cool collecting them. My boyfriend knows that I really like collecting mugs. His name is Roger. His favorite color is green. He thought he'd give me something to remind me of him and it was really sweet. And lastly, my favorite song this month. That's going to be The Darkest Place I Know by The Leisure Society. It's so, so soothing. I enjoy it a lot and The Leisure Society is really good as a whole. I would definitely recommend checking them out. That is it for this monthly wrap up and I will see you in a few weeks for my April one. I'll see you before then, obviously. I have videos that I wanna do beforehand. Bye.